what constitutes slavery. You were bought with a price. There is no more defining expression in terms of what it means to be a slave. It means to be owned. It means to be owned. Do you remember these words? Matthew 25, 21. Well done, good and faithful. That's what you have read all your life. That is not the word for servant. That is not any of the six words for servant. That is doulos, well done, good and faithful slave. When you give somebody the gospel, you are saying to them, I would like to invite you to become a slave of Jesus Christ. I would like to invite you to give up your independence. Give up your freedom. Submit yourself to an alien will. Abandon all your rights. Be owned by, controlled by the Lord. That's really the gospel. We're asking people to become slaves. I don't hear a lot of that slave talk today. Do you? A kind of service which is not a matter of choice for the one who renders it, a kind of service which he has to perform whether he likes it or not. It describes one subject totally to an alien will, the will of the owner and in total and utter dependence on that owner. That's what the word means. It is the word for slave. If you think that's a hard word for us to swallow, imagine how hard it was for those living in the midst of slavery to swallow that. How can Jesus and the apostles of the New Testament talk to people living in the midst of a slave-dominated society, ten to twelve million slaves at that very time, about the fact that being a Christian was being a slave to Jesus Christ. There wouldn't be any distant, foggy idea of what that meant. They would know exactly what that meant, precisely what it meant. Let me tell you about slaves in the Greek-Roman world. They had no freedom. They had no rights. They had no ownership of anything. They had no legal recourse in the courts. They could not give testimony as a witness in a law case. They had no citizenship. They had no possibility of doing what they wanted to do. They weren't asked, say there, Mr. Slave, what would you like to do to be fulfilled? They weren't asked, what do you think your purpose is? Can you dream your dream so I, your master, can fulfill it? Bizarre. They had no choice about anything. They owned nothing. They couldn't be citizens and they couldn't be a part of the army, the military. They were totally dependent on whoever owned them doesn't mean that it didn't have some benefits. They were provided for, cared for, protected, in many cases treated kindly, compassionately, loved within families. So the idea of coming along in that world and announcing to people that you must become a slave of Jesus Christ was just another way to present the message to make it impossible to believe. Nobody is going to line up to become anybody's slave. We're called to be slaves. And the difference between a slave and a servant is obvious, obvious. Servants were hired to work for wages. Servants were hired to work for wages and they could quit. They were paid a wage for a job. Slaves were owned and they could not quit. If they ran away, they were found, arrested, 
flogged, and there's all kinds of ancient writings about the flogging of slaves and worse, and sometimes, sometimes, many times, crucified publicly as a demonstration to the rest of the slaves of what could happen to them if they ran away. In uh, Back in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10, Paul says it again, the end of the verse, he says, if I was trying to please men, I would not be a slave of Christ. Now he understood what slavery meant. I only do what pleases my master. This is the singular focus of being a slave. You don't have to please a lot of people, you just please one. That metaphor is critical to understanding our relationship to the Lord. If we're going to talk about a personal relationship to Christ and to God, then our personal relationship is we're slaves. That's the best way to define that relationship. And Paul here tells us it means that we only please Him. He says to the Corinthians, I have as my ambition to be pleasing to Him. It came down to this, do what He says and do what pleases Him. It's that simple. That's what a slave did. Really only two possibilities. Where there was a direct command, you obeyed it. Where there was not a direct command, you found a way to do what you knew would please the Master. You obeyed Him and you pleased Him. And he says these familiar words, come now you who say today or tomorrow we'll go in. Uh, to such a such a city and spend a year there, engage in business, make a profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You're just a vapor that appears for a little while and vanishes away. Instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. That's slave talk. That's what it means to be subject to an alien will. If they were slaves in the past, they'll be slaves in the future, slaves in heaven. We're His slaves now who are being taught by the book of Revelation that these things will come to pass. We will never stop being slaves. Never. A servant could be hired and quit. A slave was owned. That means exclusive ownership because he was bought with a price. Does that sound like New Testament talk? Two, complete and constant availability and obedience. Complete and constant availability and obedience. Three, subject to one alien will. No man can be a slave to two masters, right? Impossible. You could have two employers. You could have a day job and a night job. But you can't have two masters who have total control over you because they both own you. And everybody knew that. That's why that statement is self-evident. No man can be a slave to two masters. So exclusive ownership by one master, complete, constant availability and obedience to that one master, and simple in the sense that it's singular, let's call it singular devotion to that one master. That's New Testament talk too, isn't it? Love the Lord your God with what? All your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Have no other gods. Do all that you do to please Him, to honor Christ. Fourth, the slave had complete dependence on his master for everything. For everything. Absolutely everything. 